So in the last lesson, we saw how generics and TypeScript can save us from rewriting a lot of code. And we wrote a flexible sort function, which can accept any type and then sort on any property in that type with key of T. But in addition for their uses in creating flexible and reusable code, generics can also protect us from making mistakes with types that certain functions or classes expect. And so for this example, I'm going to create a few classes here. We'll make an animal class, which has a leg count, and that's a number. Put that in. And then two other classes. We'll do cat, which extend animal. Cat has four legs. And we'll do kangaroo. That has two legs. Then, which we'll need for illustration later, I'm going to make a bacteria class, which doesn't extend animal. And we can leave that empty for now. So with these various classes, let's imagine that we want to print out the legs. And we don't want to write a cat printer for the leg count and a kangaroo leg printer. We want to just write one function that can print the legs of an animal. So how can we do that? Again, we can use generics. So we will write a function, print leg count. And in this case, just prescribing t isn't good enough because we know in this function that it has something to do with animal. We want to print the leg count and we know that all animals have a leg count. So in this case, we can use the extends keyword. That is TypeScript will accept any type as long as the given type extends animal. And of course, we can use that type in our signature. And the body would simply be Great. And so again, similar to our generic function above, we'll be able to call print leg count. For example, if we create a cat, and we can create a kangaroo, and we can call print leg count for my cat. And we can call it for my kangaroo. Now we can try to do that with the bacteria. And we see TypeScript is already complaining. Uh, argument of type bacteria is not assignable to parameter of type animal. And so that's clear. Bacteria does not extend animal and therefore does not meet this generic constraint. And this function won't work. Bacteria anyway, don't have any legs, makes sense. And so we're all set. And so this function works as we expect and how we designed. So in the last two lessons, we took an initial look into the power of generics and TypeScript, where they enable us to write both reusable code 
but also code that is properly typed according to what certain parts of our code are going to do. So just a quick note, this code will be in both lessons three and four in those branches in the repository. But note that it's just a plain TypeScript file and we're not using it anywhere else in the application. So you'll be able to check these functions out and explore a little bit the errors in the Visual Studio Code IntelliSense by yourself. But in the next lesson, you won't see it anymore and I'll be removing it. Great. In the next lesson, we're finally going to start adding some mock data to the application, type that data, and move towards a real applicable use case for TypeScript generics.